Hey, good morning and uh, welcome to the session uh, on urban church planting. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer uh, and then we get into our teaching. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful time. We thank you for giving us once again another opportunity to learn and we thank you for all that we have learned through this course and even as we come to the end of this study lord we pray that you will continue to speak to us speak through us we open our hearts lord let there be new plans new visions birth in our heart and and lord we just surrender this time into your hands lord in jesus name we pray amen Okay, so last class we did chapter 23. We looked at personal preparation uh, and we looked at a few practical aspects on personal preparation when it comes to uh, church planting. Uh, just a few of them. We talked about being spiritually strong, maintaining a consistent uh, spiritual life, get equipped, right? So uh, as a leader, you got to keep learning, got to keep developing, uh, learning, studying, reading, uh, very important. Be clear of the vision and the calling that God has placed for you. Now, remember that you are the vision bearer. You are the vision caster. You cast the vision and others will follow along. Uh, pray, plan, and prepare. So even as you uh, begin your ministry, uh, pray, plan, prepare well, learn where to go, how to go. Uh, and uh, I, I like the point number four where it says be willing to work twice as hard right so never compare what others are doing to what you are doing right so if you are a pioneer there is more effort there is more hard work that you will have to put in uh, but remember it's 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 not uh, a burden right so for example uh, you know you have a child the child is there it's a baby you got to look after the child Right. Uh, you got to feed it, right? Give it a bath, cl clean its diapers. There's so much of work to get done, right? So, but it's never a burden, right? But, you know, you got to work hard for it. Uh, you got to be emotionally strong, get things right in order, uh, uh, learn to relate with people. People skills are extremely important when it comes to uh, being a pioneer. Remember, ministry is about people, so. Uh, we can't say, hey, I'll just preach and then just go back home. No, it's about people, interaction, communicating. All of that is very important. Learn how to manage relationships, right, um, uh, without feeling guilty. So there'll be times you will have to say no to certain people. You'll have to say no to certain uh, events or programs. And, uh, you know, saying no may not be very easy especially in ministries it's it's it's, it's hard to say no but uh, we got to say no right if there are times you have to say no say no lovingly and don't feel guilty about it right so for example you know you just started your ministry it's one or two years down the line and you have a child right you're married you have a child you want to spend time with a child now don't feel that okay uh, this is a saturday so i have to do some event and only if I do some event, the church will grow. Uh, and and but then you you know you have a child, you have a family at home, but you're not able to spend time with them. Right? No, it shouldn't be that way. You should be able to say no to certain things, right? Even if it's ministry, uh, learn to say no at times. Nothing wrong, right? Um, and as we grow in leadership, as we grow as a pioneer, you, we will learn, right, uh, how to say no, uh, to be loving uh yet to be stern and and that balance is something that we can learn over time then we also looked at uh developing skills time management money management communication technical skills right uh, time management is one very important factor for a pioneer right so you you got to know okay what are what is priority how can i manage my time well and even if you look at uh, the world and you look at big leaders and pioneers of businesses they are people who manage time very effectively right? uh, because it's important it's important for a pioneer to know how to manage time so these are skills we learn then establish 
good mentoring relationships with others, uh, stay aligned and be accountable to your church, right? So this is what we did in chapter 23. Now in chapter 24, is we're just gonna look at a few points on uh, making the journey and uh, chapter 25, 26, and 27 is just future projections and being prepared for what the church can be ahead. It always always look ahead, right? A pioneer always thinks way ahead of time. Now, in 2000, and I would say 2010 or even 2012, 10 years, a decade before, nobody knew that we would have online churches and uh, it must have been there, right? Uh, uh, but very limited. But now, after the pandemic, we see that online has become a big deal, right? Now, you know, we just had we have our life groups in Bangalore here in APC. Um, many of the life groups meet online. Now, I'm not saying they have to meet online, but it's a good way to at least you know they're connected with each other. So things change. So we look at that preparedness. So let's go to twenty four making the journey okay number one step out and get on the ground to get started not everything can be done on the laptop and on the phone so you got to get out you got to step out you got to get things done right uh, if even if you look at you know getting a trust done yes most of it 90 90 percent of it can be done uh, you know, via phone and online, but but you got to get the, go out, get things done when it comes to the practical things. You can't book a hall online, meaning you got to see the place, you got to see things, the venue, the location. There's so many things involved, right? Establish commitment to your call. Very important. You got a calling, and God has called you to pioneer something. Establish commitment to it. Be commitment committed to that call. Look at the best example, and I'm sure there are many examples, right? Uh, look at the example of the great apostle Paul. God said, I'm going to make you the light to the Gentiles. I'm going to make you stand in front of kings and leaders, and you will testify of who I am. Now, the apostle Paul was so committed to that call. Right now, for, uh, now, around his age was approximately around 33 years old when he had the vision uh, in Damascus. And for about three years, he was in Arabia where he had those great revelations. And about 14 years old, he was in Tarsus. Just uh, nobody knew about him. Now, it's been about, you know, we can say, 16 to 17 years that the Apostle Paul has been out of touch, no ministry. So he's almost 50 years old. And Barnabas finds Paul, brings him to Antioch, and then go, they go to Jerusalem. And now he's starting his first missionary journey. So you look at this. It's been how many years? From 33 to almost, it's almost 17 years. But the Apostle Paul never forgot the vision that God had put for him, the call that God had for his life, that he was called to be a light to the Gentiles. And then he launched out in his missionary journey. He started all these churches We're way at the end of his, in the book of Acts, he says to, he's standing in front of Felix uh, uh, and he's, he, he's under trial and he's standing there and he says, uh, not, not Felix, he's a, a, in front of King Agrippa, and he says, Oh, King Agrippa, I have been faithful to the call of God on my life. That's what he says. He says, I've been faithful to the call of God on my life. We need to be committed to the call. Nowhere do we see the Apostle Paul saying, Oh, there's too much of persecution. There's too much of challenges. People are not agreeing to what I'm saying. People are not accepting my message. What should I do? No. There was not an ounce of, of a feeling of doubt in the Apostle Paul. Right? He was established in that commitment, established his commitment on that call. God has called me. 
and he's faithful to complete the work that he has started for me. You know, the, one of the things that by nature, you, you and I as human beings, when God calls us, you know, we want to pioneer one year down the line, you know, we're still encouraged, but it's very easy to lose hope, you know, as time goes on. It's a natural thing. It's not wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong, but we need to establish that commitment. You got to go back to God. I said, God, I know you've called me for this. Can you picture what uh, Saul of Tarsus would have been feeling? God has told me you're going to be the uh, light to the Gentiles. And here I'm in Tarsus. Mostly he was doing his tent making work there. Nobody knew about him. But I'm sure that he also you know, ministered to people. But nobody knew. There was not much of an impact. But he stayed committed to the call. So you and I, even as we make the journey, one year down the line, you, you pioneered your church or your ministry, one, two years, three years down the line. Sometimes we may not see church growth. You know, the other day, I was just uh, talking to some of them from our pastoral team. And we, you know, from 2001, when we started, APC started, 2001 February, in a year or maybe in, in about two years, the church was still very small. There were only about 100 odd people, or even lesser than that. Very few people. The growth was very less. And, and here's the thing it's very easy to lose focus. It's very easy to question God or to say, God, why is it not happening? So remember, you've got to establish your commitment. You're, you're committed to God and the call of God in your life. Right now, here's another issue that I, I've seen. Sometimes as pioneers, we compare our ministry with others' ministry. How come this church has 500 people in five years and my church has 200 people in 10 years? Now, it's a, it's a question that we can ask, right? But here's the thing. Our min the ministries may be different. Right? The way that you're doing ministry, right? I'm not saying there's no anointing, but the, the, the ministry areas may be different, right? So God has called you for something. You just be faithful there. Just be faithful in doing what God has called you to do. Right? Uh, the moment we begin to compare, we'll feel insecure. Right? Remember, when God looks at us, he looks at us as one. So don't compare. Right? It's, it's a normal thing. It's a normal tendency to compare, but don't. Try to take it off your mind. Say, God, I'm doing what you have asked me to do. I'm doing it faithfully. I'm putting in my 100%. I'm putting in my hard work. And I'm trusting you. And I know you will work. Remember, God used 12 people. The Lord Jesus used 12 people. And, the, and all of them went preaching the gospel everywhere. So sometimes it's not about the numbers. It's about commitment, right? Stay focused and avoid distractions, right? Distractions can come. I remember the enemy wants to distract us. He, he, he tries to bring in things to distract us. You stay focused. Stay focused on your vision, your callings. Put your, fix your eyes, your gaze upon the Lord. Right, uh, say God, whatever I'm doing, it is for Your glory. It's for Your honor. Right, uh, distractions come; they will go away, because your gaze is not not only on your calling, but your gaze is also on the Lord Jesus. He is the one who's leading me. Right, then be tenacious, be persistent, re resilient. Don't quit until God says your work is done. I like these three words: tenacious. That means to be fervent and persistent, right? To constantly keep knocking. Remember the uh, parable of the persistent widow, that she was persistent, right? And then resilient. Resilience is basically to go through challenges and still be committed to a cause. Don't quit until God says your work is done, right? Number five. 
if you are in a season where you are bivocational now when it comes to bivocational it's it means you're working a job and also planting a church then carefully watch over your time for spiritual growth family and work life now let's talk about this this is happening normally in urban uh, uh, you know urban cities where you got you got a person he's in working in the workplace and he plants a church right so that's wonderful because we know that if he is planning a church in an urban city you need funds right you need to have funds to start and uh, prepare everything so there there can be somebody who's already working in the corporate sector or anywhere and he starts plans to start a church now he has to look after the affairs of the church but he must also manage his personal life his personal spiritual growth his family and he must maintain a work life balance it's going to be very hard because he he or she will have to intentionally make time otherwise what will happen is it will always be work ministry work ministry in the natural because see remember this pioneers are like people who who cannot stay without work and you can't you don't find pioneers simply sitting uh just doing nothing no it's very unlikely right they have to be doing something right so it's important that we develop the ability to say okay no i should give time to my family i should give time to my children right learn to divide your time in the right way right something that has helped me and i'll just share and maybe you also can think about it number one what i do is i break the week monday to friday i break it up into what i want to do right so right now i look after three areas of ministry uh, and including bible college will be four right uh, including teaching for areas of ministry right so monday to friday or you take a seven day week right so monday to friday work days right? so i know okay it's work it's like nine to six whatever go back home so i make sure that i spend a good two hours with the children and with family good to us right so every day it's at least two hours right we just you know if it's the kids play with them uh help them to study get their homework done get to know how they've been just being with them right you know family is it's not always about talking just being there for them right so do that now what i all what we also do is on saturday i try to avoid uh, you know doing too many things and right? so i spend the whole day with my kids right? there are times i go for worship uh, practice and I come back or and then there are some days there are events right so if there are a full day event so for example if there's a conference and I have to be there nine to five so the whole day is gone so what I do is I compensate that day so I probably take a day off during the week Monday to Friday take a day off right and uh, I know that if the kids are at home I take a day off if not I try to compensate so to make sure that okay that are the, those hours that i missed out you know somewhere you know take the kids out as a family just go close by you see sometimes you just need to do simple things right and that is family time right and then you got there are times you can then you can break it up you can say okay your work as well you can break it up okay monday tuesday wednesday these are the areas of work i will look at thursday and friday these are the two areas of work i will do so you're dividing your time and then you'll realize that hey i'm able to you know you're able to touch on every area of work that has been assigned to you right now i'm not saying that it's so this is a foolproof method but this is something that works for me right so you can also divide your time into hours per day you can divide it as three hours i'll do this this and this right you can divide it that way so i just divided it by days you can divide it by hours but uh especially when it comes to this right uh, you're, you're working you've got ministry you've got family divide your time plan your week ahead you cannot have it in your mind and say okay 
uh, I'll do this, I'll do this. No, you put it, you got to put it down. You got to make sure that you follow that. Right now, initially, it may be difficult, but you have to do it. Right? And what happens is uh, you will realize that you know, you're, you're, you're able to maintain a work life balance. And now I'm not saying that I've you know, I've learned everything, but we, what we, especially in ministry, what we do is we we intentionally make time for family, because there's always we are doing something, right? We're always out, always house visits, or we're and we enjoy it. That's the you know that's the best part in ministry. Like as leaders and as pastors, uh, pioneers, we enjoy going and ministering to people. It's not a burden. So in that enjoyment, sometimes we may forget about priorities as well. And so uh, always make sure that you put that down. Ask questions. Number six, ask questions. Keep learning. Keep revising. Keep adjusting. Right? Uh, ask good questions. Keep learning. Keep revising. Keep adjusting. Uh, keep changing things around. Make sure that you're able to you know, balance yourself, know that, okay, what's happening around? Am I in tune with what's happening? You know, media and technology and you know, what is being preached, the styles of uh, preaching, Bible studies. Keep yourself occupied. Keep yourself learning, right? And now with uh, Google and online, there's so much that is available. So you can just, you know, just in the tip of your fingers, you can... You know, read so much that is available, right? Uh, you have commentaries now. You have so much, right, that you can just, by a click, just read and learn, right? So learning can never be an excuse for us as leaders. And again, because of busyness, sometimes you may avoid uh, wanting to read and learn, uh, uh, but we got to make time for it. Right? Got to make time, sit cut off your things from you know cut off your mind and your things from uh you know just doing ministry just being in god's presence spending time learning and developing your skills right? nurture and protect what god has birthed avoid wrong alliances eliminate things that are destructive now look at this imagine I'm just going to give you an example. Imagine, you know, you've been praying to God and you're saying, God, help me to plant this church. And then after two years of praying, you plant a church and you put in all your hard work there, right? You worked hard, ministry, and, you know, just put in everything, your heart, your soul, everything into the church plant. And now it is almost 10 years. And in 10 years, your church has been established. You have about 500, 600 people in the church. Now, it is very easy if we have wrong alliances. It is very easy for something to come and destroy your ministry. What it took you 10 years of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears to build, it can, you know, somebody can come and just, when I, when I say somebody, wrong alliances can come. And what took you 10 years to build, you can lose it in a moment. It's true, right? So it's very important that we nurture and protect what we have built. So something that we do in APC, uh, and I've noticed is that we're very careful about who we, give for preaching but don't just give everyone right preaching is very ministering of god's word it's very rare you know maybe once a year we have a guest preacher no. but it's always uh, you know because why uh, we want to nurture and protect what we have we have it's years that this has we've come up to now and uh, we want to avoid wrong alliances now how do i know well, that can be a question. How do I know that this is a wrong alliance? Right? That's where comes in the wisdom of God. That's where we have to depend on God, trust God, uh, you know, just learn to hear from Him. Uh, when you're unsure, wait. Don't make a decision. Right. So, for example, you have a guest. A person says, "Hey, can I come and preach in your church?" 
uh, and you feel you know, unsure, so, yeah, I'll let you know. Now you pray about it. Ask God to minister to you. Right now, remember the other point in personal preparation, right? Where we talked about the ability to say no. Right. So if you feel that God is not, uh, God is you know saying, you know, not now, say no to the person. Right? Because what you're doing is you're protecting, you're nurturing what you have built for 10 years. Right? You don't want somebody to come and he'll preach and go. But then you have to, you know, uh, look after all the damage that is done. Right? So, so you've got to be very careful. Uh, uh, nurture what you, uh, what you have built. Right? It could be theology. It could be... Uh, practices and ideas, especially theology. Right? Uh, yeah, you've got to nurture it. You've got to make sure that you know, what is being preached is in line with your vision, your calling, and, and in line, firstly, with God's word. Uh, you can't have somebody coming and preaching something that is totally in, not in line with God's word. And what's going to happen is you're going to have people with different levels of maturity in the church, and it's only going to cause damage. Right, and then repairing it is going to take time. Now at ABC, we have gone through these things, right? We have tried things, we have failed. So trial and error is always good, uh, but there are times when it, you know, it just took us maybe even a year to get things repaired, meaning to make sure, okay, this problem is solved, or uh, you know, this um, thing that has happened in a right way, you know, the problem was solved. So it almost took us a year. Right, so we learn from that, right? um, and then be a steward, not an owner. It means encourage others to be part of what you are uh, doing. Right, so be a steward. Uh, uh, don't don't tell people always what to do, but do, and then let people watch and learn. Right, take care of yourselves yourself you are a blessing you are blessing others when you take care of yourself very important so pioneer take care of yourself take care of your health now uh, I was talking to a couple of pastors many years back when I, th I think we were at a uh, missions uh, uh, I forget when and where but I remember talking to a couple of pastors and these pastors was I kept noticing they were taking these tablets uh, and they were young, right? So I asked them, I said, what is it? What is, why is it that you're you know, taking before your meal, after your meal, you're taking tablets? Oh, you know, um, we started ministry when we were very, very young. And what happened was we just ate anything. Uh, we didn't bother about how we were. You know, we ate anything that was given to us, all, you know, outside food, oily food, unhealthy food, junk food. We ate everything. And that happened for about uh, 10 years now after that now these are the problems we have um, and that when he was sharing that it really struck a chord with me because you know sometimes in this in this being zealous of doing ministry uh, we end up not looking after our health right and which is wrong because we got to be healthy to do the ministry we can't afford to do ministry and we're not healthy, right? So, so you got to look after yourself, your eating habits. You know, if you have to exercise, exercise. You know, get good sleep, get good rest, right? Uh, these are important things, right? Uh, because when you are healthy, you're able to think, you're able to do, be more effective when it comes to ministry. Then number ten, plan for future generations, right? Uh, raise up succeeding uh, leaders in the next generation. Set things in place that the succeeding generations can build on and leave a legacy. This is the most, I believe, for me at least, it is the most exciting part of ministry. To see a person grow from where he is to where God wants him to be is the most exciting part. And there are so many leaders that we have now who were there with us from children's church and now they are youth leaders right now they are just there they are life group leaders cell group leaders and it's wonderful to see it they were there you know in children's church but 
plan for your future generations right raise up a, a generation that can build on what you have started right I remember we talked about this the greatest sign of a leader is not what he how big the ministry is or, uh, or how how many conferences or he's done or how many preachers he has uh, how many messages he or sermons he has preached no the greatest sign of a leader is how many leaders he is able to raise up greatest sign it's not about uh, how many books or all of that is part of the calling but the greatest sign of a leader is how many leaders he's able to raise up uh, set things in place for the next generation right raise up leaders who can take up this mantle right um, and God will send people right we, we, we will have to give people opportunities train them up they will make mistakes right you correct them encourage them lift them up right? be patient with them right and so as pioneers we need to develop that skill of raising leaders right and and you know something that we have in APC is uh, emerging leaders right something that we do so we currently have youth leaders uh, all across uh, our Bangalore locations so we have youth leaders uh, so they oversee the youth and probably in their locations as well and now we have emerging leaders so these youth leaders and of course some some of them from the uh, the youth pastors they identify leaders that are going to you know emerging leaders for the next maybe for the next decade or so they'll be very young 20 years old now they may not know everything in god's word they may not have deep revelations of god's word but what what we're doing is we're training them to be the next leaders so then maybe five years down the line you'll have one uh, you know maybe 10 15 emerging leaders becoming youth leaders or or life group leaders and then from life group leaders they become associate pastors and from associate pastors they become uh, uh assistant pastors and just be, just joining the pastoral team from where from being a youth in the church so plan for your future generation leave a legacy that can carry on and on and on from generation to generation because what you build now will stay to till the end for your ministry lastly step out and hand over at the right time uh, this is a hard time uh, but you have to do it when you are a pioneer uh, there will be a time God will just ask you to hand over now we are so attached to the ministry we are so attached to the people it's it's a common it, it is natural to feel uh, you know to feel emotionally sad and but it's good because what you're doing is you're letting go and you're letting the work the ministry to move on how do you think Moses felt and God told Moses right and that mountain he said God Moses is standing on that mountain and he's saying God is telling Moses because you disobeyed me by the rivers of Kadesh you will not enter the promised land but a new generation will enter and this generation Joshua will take it further what do you think Moses would have felt? Have you ever thought of that? He did all the hard work. All the hard work Moses did. He went up fasting 40 days. What was Joshua doing? He was just waiting. He went, prayed for 40 days. He saw the glory of God. He went to Pharaoh. He, he did all the sacrifice. He got the people out of Egypt. He went and heard from God. He prayed when the serpents were biting all the... Uh, you know and all the uh, Israelites and they were dying and everything was Moses 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 then comes this man Joshua and God is telling Moses you won't go into the promised land you got to stay back you got to hand over to Joshua and Joshua may be feeling but this is the best part no God how can you make me skip the best part right? but hand over at the right time it, it could have it may have been hard for Moses but he knew 
that there was a bigger purpose. Joshua had to take it on. Now, you know what's the interesting part? Joshua, God, Moses trained Joshua. Right? He trained Joshua. Joshua was ready. What did God tell Joshua? Joshua chapter 1. And as I was with Moses, so I am with you. And the, the Israelites just, they didn't question Joshua, who are you, where are you from? No. Why should why is it that we should believe in you? Moses, okay, he parted the seas into two. There's a pillar of fire. We saw the miracles. Well, who are you? No. They saw Joshua. They saw the leadership in him. Moses planned for the next generation. And it was beautiful. The transition was so beautiful. Moses just said, here, Joshua, you're the leader. And he leads the people into the promised land. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Here's an important point. Sometimes, as pioneers, we may feel that without me, it won't work. The ministry won't work, which is wrong. The ministry is God's work. God will bring people. If we choose a person, for example, God will still work. Because the ministry is not ours, it's God's. The working may be different. See, Moses parted the seas. There was a pillar of fire. He did all these wonderful miracles. God was with Joshua also. What did Joshua do? He made the sun stand. No, Moses didn't do that. What did Joshua do? He looked at the walls of Jericho and he, he brought down the walls. Different, different kind of work. But God was with them. So even when we hand over, don't expect the ministry to be the same as how you had started it. There can be different things. There can be changes. Allow it to happen. Yet, uh, we must ensure that, you know, as uh, that the word and all of that is is you know well protected the word the vision all of that is the same and everyone are in one mind uh, so there's a recommended reading here code of honor and house of god uh, these are free apc publications so you can go online to our website apcwo.org let's put it here dot org slash publications you can download the books uh, uh, and then you, it'll, it'll be, I'm sure you've, I, th I think you've done the house of God uh, in the second years, right? So that's again a very good book. Code of Honor is a powerful book that you can read, especially for leaders and pioneers, how to start a ministry in an honorable way and to live in an honorable way, right? So we'll stop here. Uh, we'll meet maybe for the next class we'll do 25 26 chapter 25 to 27 uh in the appendix we see this is major cities in india we'll just touch on it i know that uh, you know maybe there are some of us here who are not from india uh but we'll talk about just a few pointers and how you can do uh, basically a, a consensus of your city or your state that you are living in so so we'll meet next class for this, and uh, that then we should be able to wrap up in maybe the next class. And, uh, any questions? Any thoughts? Right. So what what I'll do is uh, after the next session, uh, when, once we complete this, uh, uh, I'll put up the assignment as well on the classrooms, and then you can begin to work on your assignments. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, feel free to ask questions. You can email uh, at, at me anytime, uh, and we'll be able to respond to you. Right. So we'll meet next class, and we should be able to wrap up in the next class. Right. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Have a great day ahead. I'll see you next class. God bless you.